conquest of Everest. And the great symbols of our culture are the rocket and the bulldozer. The rocket, you know, compensation for the sexually inadequate male. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to conquer space. You know, we're in space already, way out. If anybody cared to be sensitive and let what's outside space come to you, you can if your eyes are clear enough. Aided by telescopes, aided by uh, radio astronomy, aided by all the kind of sensitive instruments we can devise. We are as far out in space as we're ever going to get. But, you know, sensitivity isn't the pitch. In, in especially in the WASP culture of the United States, we define manliness in terms of aggression. You see, because we are not, we're a little bit frightened as to whether we are really men. And so we put on this great show of being a tough guy. Uh, it's completely unnecessary. Uh, it, it, you know, if you have what it takes, you don't need to put on that show. You don't need to beat nature into submission. Why be hostile to nature? Because after all, you are a symptom of nature. You, as a human being, you grow out of this physical universe in just exactly the same way that an apple grows off an apple tree. So let's say the tree which grows apples is a tree with apples, using apple as a verb. And a world in which human beings arrive is a world of peoples. And so the existence of people is symptomatic of the kind of universe we live in. Just as spots on somebody's skin are symptomatic of chicken blood. But we have been brought up by reason of our two great myths, the ceramic and the fully automatic. Not to feel that we belong in the world. So our popular speech reflects it. We say, I came into this world. You didn't, you came out of it. We say, face facts. We talk about encounters with reality. As if it was a head-on meeting of completely alien agencies. And the average person has the sensation that he is a somewhat that exists inside a bag of skin. A center of consciousness, which looks out of this thing. What the hell is it going to do to him? You see? Uh, I recognize you, you kind of look like me, and uh, I've seen myself in a mirror, and uh, y you look like you might be people. <laughs> so maybe you're intelligent, maybe you can love too. And uh, maybe perhaps you're all right, some of you are anyway. You've got the right color of skin, or you have the right religion, or whatever it is, you're okay. Look at all those people over in Asia, Africa. And they may not really be people. When you want to destroy someone, you always define them as unpeople. Not monkeys, maybe idiots, maybe machines, maybe, but not people. But we have this hostility to the external world because of the superstition, the myth, the absolutely unfounded theory that you yourself exist only inside your skin. Now, I want to propose another idea of and other astronomers they say there was a primordial explosion. Enormous bang millions of years ago, billions of years ago, which flung all the galaxies into space. Well, let's take that just for the sake of argument and say that was the way it happened. It's like uh, you took a bottle of ink and you threw it at a wall. Smash, and all that ink spreads. And in the middle, it's dense, isn't it? And as it gets out on the edge, the little droplets are finer and finer and make more complicated patterns. So in the same way, there was a big bang at the beginning of things and it spread. And you and I, sitting here in this room, as complicated human beings, are way, way out on the fringe of that bang. We are the complicated little patterns on the end of it. Very interesting. But so we define ourselves as being only that. If you think that you are only inside your skin, you define yourself as one very complicated little curly cube, way out on the edge of that explosion, way out in space and way out in time. 